Let's get a quick take on Congress overriding a veto for, from President Obama for the very first time. Both the House and the Senate voted overwhelmingly to override Obama's veto of a bill that will allow the families of 9-11 victims to sue the government of Saudi Arabia over the suspicion of involvement. Patty Calhoun from Westward, there seemed to be almost an immediate buyer's remorse from the Senate. It was almost they were astonished that, oh, wait, this was serious? Like we, we, we could actually override a veto with this? Do you think there's going to be amendments on the horizon seeing that we saw such buyer's remorse from the Senate? Well, I think they were just so shocked that they'd actually agreed on something, which that probably has never happened to. Forget the veto. They've just never agreed. I think they did the right thing. I, don't th I think they will leave it alone until after the election. David Copel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. Is there a winner here seeing that, yeah, Obama's veto was uh, overridden, but then people, it seemed, Congress regretted it almost immediately? Well, some people said they did. You know, if, if Obama is well known for having the worst congressional relations uh, of any president, you know, maybe ever, um, the, the way he just treats them with contempt, and I think this is part, part of this is the fruition uh, of, of eight years of, of that. Uh, the winners are the people who are going to be able to do the lawsuit they want to do, and I think it, it's, it's pretty well known that the Saudi government at the least turned a blind eye to known terrorist financing coming from Saudi sources. Now, can you prove that in court beyond a reasonable doubt? You know, it's, there's the Clinton level of did he do it, and now, now can you prove it? Um, and that may be tough, but it's also going to uh, encourage other countries to think of ways to sue more Americans. Eric Sonnen, political analyst. Uh, some folks said that this was passed for political points. Do those get scored? Oh, I, it was an easy vote to vote to override the veto to vote for the legislation in the first place. To David's point, it's not just a few obscure Congress people or senators who had buyer's remorse. You start with Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, and Mitch McConnell. I mean, you're talking the real players here who immediately sort of regretted it. It, it just speaks to the different responsibilities of the two branches of government. Uh, I'm not known at this table for always jumping to Barack Obama's defense, but that was a tough bill to veto. It would have been the easy act would have just been let it go through, let it slide, let the courts sort it out. But I think the unintended consequences here might be worse than... Um, uh, than the, than the noble purpose behind the bill in terms of letting these injured families, these victimized families, have their day in court. I think you could start to see this thing spiral in terms of international relations. And political activist Justine Sandoval joins us. Uh, Justine, this wasn't just a Republican coup. The Senate voted 97 to 1 uh, to override this veto. So do some Democrats have some work to do now, President Obama? Oh, absolutely. And we talk about, you know, this being you know, 9-11 vote. Nobody likes to vote against anything 9-11 related when it comes to victims. And what I really, I'll be the Obama defender here, what I really find interesting is it was an immediate regret, you know, for the overriding the veto on the vote. And Mitch McConnell came out and said, you know, Obama should have voiced his concerns sooner. Like, <laughs> vetoing the bill wasn't a concern enough. I just thought it was really interesting that they would go back, you know, override the veto and then blame Obama for it. That, <laughs> that was astonishing. He's probably said he's against the bill if he's vetoed Just it. So. Eight, it's eight years continued on. To today, so. <laughs>